um, I'm shortly just going to, um, Alan's going to share his desktop. You'll see there's a chat pane for questions. If you've got questions at any point, please type them in. We'll be looking at that at the end. And um, apart from that, sit back and... One other thing to mention is we've got some web links down on the bottom left corner. Um, these are things which we'll be referring to during the course of the presentation. Um, the actual blog is the first one on the list, Touch Typing and Dyslexia blog. Then Doorway Online, that's um, a link to a blog that Craig did a few weeks ago about Doorway and how it's, it's became, becoming a touch typer changed his life. He used to work in the kitchen and now he works for Call Scotland, traveling all, mm. over, the, all over the country. Um, he also did a workbook for Doorway Online, which is one of the, the text type free um, app. That's one of the apps that we'll be looking at in the course of the afternoon. And there's also links to some old stuff that we did um, with ergonomic quick guides, keyboarding quick guides, and also a link to the TeachNet website where you can print your own keyboard. But we'll say some more about these things later on during the course of the, the presentation. Great. So, so li live links there to click on uh, whenever you whenever you like. But uh, yep. now Alan's going I'm to share going to his desktop, desktop and off we go. And I'll share my screen. That should be fine. And here we go. All these little procedures we have to remember to do. Oh, I didn't do that. I'm going a bit too far forward there. But never mind. Um, I've got myself into this wee blog. Yeah, this is the one that I've been busy. Oh, started it yesterday afternoon, finished it this morning, and it's talking about um, touch typing for people with dyslexia. I'm sure everybody who's in attending this webinar has worked with somebody who has dyslexia, maybe a child or an adult, and their handwriting is so awful that they never read back anything that they've written, they can't read their handwriting. They hate anything to do with the writing because it just looks so bad. They're so used to having sort of experiencing failure. Um, touch that well, typing may at least makes the work, work look much more presentable, much makes it things much neater. And if you've got a piece of good piece of typing, it's something piece of you can produce a piece of work that you're going to be proud of. Touch typing adds a little bit more to it rather than doing the hunt and peck because. For a start, it's a lot faster, and it means that you can develop a sort of automaticity in terms of the the keyboards, through the keys that you're pressing. There's so many letter combinations, for example, I, G, H, T, that could occur in lots of different words. And once your fingers have got used to typing I, G, H, T, then they'll start, so they'll type the I, G, and then their twin finger, next finger will be twitching to type on the H. And then once you've got the I, G, H, then the T is definitely going to be the next after the slide. So, so you learn more and more about spelling through, through touch typing. There is, of course, um, research that's been done. I'm very, very quickly going through a lot of this stuff. Because if you look at the blog, there'll be more, you'll see much, much more information about it. As is so often the case, you never find exactly what you're looking for when you're searching for the research. I was really wanting something that would help show that touch typing would be really good for um, producing more writing, producing correctly spelt words and, and all the, these sorts of things, and just producing a much more effective piece of writing. Came across various things which that would look at different aspects of the research. Probably the closest that came across was a piece by Maram and Weintraub, or Weintraub, not sure how this that one's pronounced, um, where it's looked at the effect of touch typing, um, of, or learning touch typing on higher education students. They had two groups of students, um, one with uh, learning difficulties, and I think well, quite a few of those were dyslexia, although it wasn't really spelled out clearly in the article. And there's also a group of, shall we say, normally achieving students. And both sets of students did some touch typing uh, instruction. And um, at the end of the period, their various tests were done. And they, 
they, there wasn't enough time for them to develop full type typing skills, but it's certainly fairly obvious that the um, students who are dealing with learning disabilities could uh, touch type and they're going almost as fast as the, the uh, normal achieving group. Um, I think there's quite, a key, quite an interesting sentence they had right in one of their conclusions. It says, this is especially important for students with a writing disability since they often use a computer in order to circumvent their handwriting difficulties. So certainly there can be advantages to using um, typing and touch typing um, as a, a means for producing writing. Um, there are various low-tech methods that people could be using. Um, this link here goes off to a site where you can print off uh, keyboards so you can be sitting on the train or sitting without a device in front of you and just tapping away on a piece of paper uh, and just developing your touch typing skills as you're doing that. Um, it used to be in typing schools people would have a, a little wooden frame to type and put over the keys so you couldn't actually cheat by looking at the keyboard and some strict person would come around with a ruler and Hit you on your fingers if you weren't you if you started looking at the keys on your key, the keyboard. Fortunately, we've moved on a lot since since those days, and we now have we're moving towards a situation where we have more and more people are using online typing. Um, for a while, there are what you, people could buy typing programs, but nowadays there's, there's not really much point in doing that because there are so many good options online and I'm going to be looking at uh, four or five of these options in the next few minutes and then we'll have a chance for a wee bit of chat at the end of it. Um, the first one I'm going to look at is BBC Dance Map. Um, that's what it looks like, a uh, wee bit of a uh, quick description of what, I, what I'm doing with it. But rather than reading through all this boring old text, I here's, here's one that I've got set up all together. This is what the Doorway Online website looks like, or the opening uh, setup system. You can, and there are various options in terms of how you want the um, activities to appear and how you want things to be sounded. Um, you can change highlighting colors. I'm going to stick with all these options down the side here. You can change the highlighting colors at the moment it's green, I could change it to red. Let's try and put it to red. And I can change from a standard dark text on a white background. I could have white text on a black background. I'll let you see both of these to just to, to start with. Um, first lesson on Doorway Online is looking at the home keys. So tap on home keys. And I should really have minimized this, shouldn't I? Yep. Here we go, click on start. E. And here we go, we've got the red S highlighting. D, F, and space. Sound feedback. E. It tells you which key you should be pressing, and you can also see at the top of the screen which keys you should be pressing as well. So that's using the red light highlighting black text on a light grey background. I'll just go back and let you see the black. It's using a black background. Uh, let's try a different option, click on e. start, and here we go, white text on the black background. S, D, F, space, F, D, S, A, space, A. And so on. It's clicking on this the whole cog wheel, means I can stop the activity and go back up to the main option, which is a very handy little feature when I'm doing a demonstration like this. Doorway Online, it has got, ooh, how many is it, 56 little exercises. Um, it starts off with sort of doing key, key combinations, it gradually adds more keys um, and then moves on to typing, punctuation, capitals, mixed capitals, commas, etc. Starts typing words, names, uh, numbers, days of the month. It's a great variety of different things available. Um, it quite it it develops quite nicely, I feel. It's when it starts adding various letters, it doesn't just 
throw in a little sort of a new letter, it reinforces the learning that you've already done and then introduces the, the new letters. In some ways, it may be very, very repetitive, and some people will find it repetitive, but um, I actually quite liked it. When I was using it earlier on, I was definitely feeling that I was developing good touch typing skills. I'm not quite sure how well um, these will last. But um, I was really quite impressed with, with Doorway. Shirley, have you used Doorway much? Yes, and that, and as you talk, they talk about the repetition, that's good, isn't it? Because yes, then it becomes yes. a kind of muscle memory and you, you know, you're yep. embedding everything you've learned. And it does do that thing where you're practicing previous lessons um, and then moving on to, to adding to that. So I know it's a really good one and very accessible. Yep. Yeah, it's, um, it's one that we'd really recommend to a lot of people. Um, however, that's not quite the one I meant to be demonstrating there. Um, I was going to be doing Dance Mat, which is another popular one. Um, again, I quite like Dance Mat. Um, it's one produced by the BBC and it's very, very popular. Um, how it works, it's got different levels. Level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. Each of these is introduced by a different character. Uh, level 1 looks at the home row keys. And so we'll start off with um, a little demonstration of level 1. Oh. Hi there, rock and rollers. We're going to have us a blast. Got those tapping feet on the ground? Then we're ready to rock and roll. Follow Gary's instructions to learn the moves you'll need for typing. Look at the records on the bottom bar to see how far through you are. I must... First, kids, find me two keys, F and J, each with a bump. Left pointing finger on the F, type an F. Right pointing finger on the J, type a J. Now rest your other fingers next door on the home row keys. I find Gary quite irritating, so I've just turned him off for the moment. Um, but then he sort of invites me to start typing various letters in a minute. You have to wait for him to finish speaking and saying his groovy. Now try typing these letters in a row. Okay, let's just do a quick thing here. And then And the letters I'm typing are right, they're quite small up at the top of the, the screen, but this screen's actually quite good, as and it's, it's sort of quite clear, it's an interesting screen. Some children really love Gary and all his friends, um, but I just find them just a wee bit irritating. I'm going to go back up to the home screen, and so that was Gary introducing the top row. Going to go on to the last one, and I can't remember this one, this person's name. Hello, chicken. I'm your next typing partner. Lucky old you, eh? Come on in and meet the family. Follow Ray's instructions ah, to learn Ray. the moves you'll need right. for typing. Look at the eggs on the bottom bar to see how far through you are. Again, it's a sort of quite a fun activity. Um, and you start off typing and you help to use the, the right fingers and the right keys. But some of the screens are really very cluttered. Um, it's quite difficult to see what you're meant to be doing some of the times or which keys you're meant to be pressing. And there's lots and lots of distractors. But at the same time, um, many children do enjoy it. Um, and it's very, very popular. So... Where are we going to go to next? Um, I've lost me. Hey. Oh, never mind. Lost me blog. So I'll just load it up again, and it's touch typing, and it's next here, that's the one that I'm after. I'm not quite sure what happened there, I think I lost, lose the place. Never mind. Um, so we've looked at Dance Mat, 
we've looked at Doorway Online, looked at Big Brown Bear. Um, this is one that Shirley recommended to me, um, but we'll just have a quick look at it. And it should be appearing on the screen. Yeah, I liked uh, Big Brown Bear just in sort of contrast to Dance Mat with the the, the voices, yeah. which, as you said, some children do do like. I think children definitely like them more than adults, but this one was just uh, for someone who didn't like the voices but just wanted a nice, clear interface, and that's what the Big Brown Bear one uh, offered. Yes, I, I wish it would be nice and clear and to appear on my desktop, but it's... Um... Right, okay, just going in a slightly different route now. Just typing class, hopefully get through this quite quickly. I think I maybe have got an ad blocker turned on, which is causing some sort mm -hmm. of issues here. So get this turned off. Right now. This isn't how I have looked at before. Is there maybe a link on the blog we could There's click through from there? I clicked on the link on the blog and it just didn't go. I don't know where the blog goes, it just keeps vanishing. Let's try it again. Well, the Big Brown Bear's got a couple of different options in there where you've got your very simple just starting basically with your letters and building up to CVC words um, and then longer words and phrases. Um, there's a little timed game as well you can play once you've got your you've mastered the, the location on the keyboard of all the letters you can give yourself a 30 second uh, timed tester and that's really good uh, that, that worked well certainly for one of the couple of the pupils I was working with and it is just not appearing I've clicked on the link the link is is, is working perfectly well earlier on and it's just not happening mm -hmm. sorry about this mm -hmm. it's um there's one all. one to try later yes, we'll share the link yes. with you and you can um, as have all, a go as always say it was working perfectly mm -hmm. earlier on today but suddenly when we start going live um everything sort of uh, falls to pieces okay let's try the next one hope i hope, really hope this one works typing club ah yes this is, this is much better this is going to work when I first looked at Typing Club, I clicked on the Get Started, and I thought it's one of these ones. Oh, you're allowed to do the first lesson, then maybe the second lesson, um, and then that's it. At some point, you'll be locked and you won't be able to do anything at all. But then I sort of discovered, just as sort I of started playing around, that uh, not only to get all these sort of lessons, introducing individual keys. Sometimes it gives you a typing practice. Sometimes there's a little um, piece of video, a piece of animation to introduce the program. Um, and then it gradually spit, builds up. And let's see how it builds up. Over on the right, there's a little um, line that I can go down. And so it starts off with lesson one. Let's just see how far it goes. That's down to 684. So you've got a lot of stuff that you can choose from. And this is a free version. It's free on the site. And you can use any of these 600, 684, was it? Yeah, well, 684. That'll yeah. keep you busy. That'll <laughs> definitely keep you six, oh, 600. Yes, yeah, 684. You can use all 684. You don't have to do them all. But there are certain things that you can you can sort of look at. But we're just going to go start at the beginning because the beginning is a very good place to start. As some Disney character was it Mary Poppins said that? Can't remember. <laughs> um, and this one that introduced as a little video clip. I hope. 
Here we go. So, so, I hear you want to type like a pro. Let's start by setting up your finger positioning. Look at the F and J keys on your keyboard. Do you see the bumps on each key? Close your eyes and feel for the bumps using your two index fingers. Take your time, but don't look. I'm just rushing to the end of that because the voice, again, I'm so easily irritated by the voices that you get on the... On let's get things. started. But let's just, let, that's it, let's get started. Okay, type the F key. And the J. Great job. Space to begin. Okay, so now type... Oops, oh, got one wrong. And that's that, but that's, we're now on to lesson three. So although there's 684 lessons, you can get through them really quite quickly. And there's all sorts of really useful stuff in this book, in this one. Mm -hmm. um, I've got the ads disabled again, so you can't actually see the ads. Um, let's just go back to the beginning. Always good to see when, what happens when you don't get it right, and that was quite a yeah, clear message. Yeah, it sort of, um, yeah, it, it, it sort of um, stops you. Some of the programs, it's quite interesting, they let you continue if you type the wrong letter. Other ones you have to, it'll actually stop you, and you have to, you can't go on until you do right. type the right letter. Mm -hmm. um, there are arguments for both of those, both of those options. Right, that's... Um, another of these ones I was going to show, that's the Typing Club. And I really do quite like Typing Club. Let's just go back to the blog. I'm not going to do this last one. Um, it's a sort of, it's one called KeyBR. Um, it works in a slightly different way from the others because it's really just giving you lots and lots of exercises to practice with rather than starting you off on the, the home keys, mm -hmm. the, the, the F and the J, and then gradually building up. It just gives you lots and lots mm -hmm. of tidbits of text to practice with. Would but that it, one be more for older learners? Probably for, yeah. for older learners. But people who have got a bit of keyboard familiarity and are just wanting something to help them speed up their, their mm -hmm. text, their, their typing. Yeah, because that's useful because some of the other ones have got that kind of younger look and feel about them. Yes, so somebody yes. Is, Perhaps uh, in yeah. secondary school. Key, key BR is, is fine for that sort of thing. I, I think for some of the older learners, then there's a lot to be said for Typing Club for right. that one because mm -hmm. it's got, towards the end, it's you get sort of long passages of text that you're, that you're asked, to, mm -hmm. asked to do sort of copy typing with. Time is getting mm -hmm. on. Well, that's a really good selection there. Just, um, just want mm -hmm. to say one more quick thing before we open things up for sort of questions is using an iPad. People often ask, what about touch typing on an iPad? Well, it's not really something that people encourage people to do because it's it's a wee bit hard to, to touch type on a uh, on the, the iPad screen. But if you do want to touch type, then get an external keyboard. It could be a Bluetooth keyboard or something like the smart keyboard that you can use with the, the iPad Pro. And if with those, you can use any of these online um, programs that we've been, we've been looking at. Um, uh, but if you insist on using um, a, a program for touch typing on the actual original uh, keyboard, there are a few apps that you can use for that. There's one, for example, called Tap Typing, which, uh, which I quite like the look of. Um, I managed to get a 95% success rate when I was trying it out. Excellent. Um, it also mm -hmm. shows you which keys will be used mm -hmm. most frequently in that particular mm -hmm. exercise. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm just going to turn off my screen sharing now. Excellent. We'll go back and see if there's any questions um, in the let's... chat box. I did see that Ailsa had, had her hand up at one point, so if you've got a question now, Ailsa, put it into the chat box and uh, we can, Alan can answer it. I can try. <laughs> Yeah, Ailes is typing now, so ah, good, see what the right. question is. Um, anyone else that wants to type in a question, we can uh, we can run through them all before the end. 
mm-hmm. the three sides are typing. I've just had the sudden thought as to why um, Big Brown Beer wasn't working. It's because it's because it's the it's the flash thing, which is maybe clashing with something else that I've gone got on here. Everything else would have been fine. Uh, Eos's question is just to say that there's a lot of echo on the webinar. This may be a problem with the recording. Okay, thanks very much for that. Um, I think Robert has been monitoring it, um, so we'll see what see what it's like at, at his end. Mm-hmm. Sorry about the problems there for you, Elsa. Um, any other questions about the touch typing programs that Alan showed you? So it was Doorway, Dance Mat, uh, Brown Bear, and Typing Club. Um, Brown Bear yeah, is the one that I didn't was, quite manage to see. To yes. Uh, What's your worth, thoughts worth about Nessie Fingers, it, Emma's asking? Uh, sorry, Anna's asking. Anna. It, mm. Again, yep, Nessie Fingers, I think it's it's very good. It's a wee bit sort of um, cluttery. It's a bit like dance, dance mats, I suppose, in some ways, but it's not quite as straightforward as something like um, the uh, text typing in Dolby online. But mm. it's... It's a good app. I mean, it's, if people are familiar with the Tessie program, Tessie apps, Tessie programs, then it also keeps the continuity of that. And frankly, with a lot of these things, it's just a matter of personal preference. Mm-hmm. Some people will like Nessie. Some people will like um, the Dolby Online. Some people will like like Dance Mat. And some um, people, there's some free, and some obviously yeah. that's obviously. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, well, appealing I, to people. I like to focus yeah. on the free ones yeah. in this situation. Um, a, a question here from Teresa, who's a public librarian in, in the US. Um, any recommendation for adults needing typing help? Right. Um, the adult ones, I would think, think possibly Typing Club, because certainly some of the, the later options for that are um, much more adult oriented. Because I was just going to stump some of the early lessons um, towards the towards the end of the um, lessons, you can actually see sort of long passages of text, and it's quite adult text that people can practice on. Um, so it's it's certainly worth considering. Um, typing club, and that was one of the six hundred eighty four different lessons. Six hundred eighty four. So yes. So if you start some... start about somewhere yeah. six somewhere around six hundred or so, then there's lots of stuff mm. to be done through there. Hopefully worth a look for you there, Teresa. Thanks for joining us today. Um, lots of thanks in for you for, for uh, showing the different websites. People looking forward to going back in the class and trying them out. Um, any other questions before we uh, wrap it up for today? This is being recorded and it will be available as an archive later. If, if you've got colleagues that want to see it, please uh, just go to our website and look at the uh, archived uh, section there. Douglas um, has just asked about there's a useful 100 mm-hmm. typing program available. Can't remember the website. You're probably thinking of um, the Doorway Online website. The 100 typing's not available just at this very moment. Their work, because it was one of these programs that was done in um, Adobe Flash, but they are producing a new 100 version. So that will be available soon, and it's it will also be free. Good, and we'll put we'll stick that link up as well, Doug. Thanks for thanks for bringing that to our attention, and just to mentioning that as well. Well, if we don't have any more questions, uh, I just like to say thank you very much, to Alan, for uh, thank you uh, my, sharing his uh, wisdom on apart touch from, typing apart and from brown bear. Uh, brown bear was the only one, the flash flash based one that wasn't uh, working there for us. Um, but thank you very much for joining in today. And please remember, we've got uh, webinars going all the all the time. Uh, just look, have a look at our website and our on our training section. And thank you very much uh, for joining today. And uh, goodbye for now. Okay. Goodbye, everybody.